Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy. Welcome to your channel for Synth DIY, modular synthesizers and new technologies applied to music and sound design. Today we're going to build and play with the Befaco Lich module. Lich is a programmable multifunction module based on Rebel Technologies OWL platform. This is a collaboration that brings back OWL's platform with this new hardware iteration. It has a USB type B MIDI connector as well as a USB type A MIDI connector where you can plug in your USB MIDI controller directly. Lich will even power most controllers. There's a 7 segment LED display to indicate the current patch loaded. The rotary encoder is also a button. You can browse the patches turning it and then select by pushing it. You have manual controls for four main parameters of the patch. There are two push buttons, four CV input attenuators, dedicated CV inputs for each one of the main pots, stereo audio inputs, stereo audio outputs, two CV outputs, two gate inputs, and a gate output. Lich comes with four patches loaded, reverb, stereo delay, harmonic oscillator, and a two-way CV to MIDI and MIDI to CV converter. On start, Lich will load patch one by default. You can also load more patches from OWL's library and even create your own. The kit comes with everything you need to build it. It's easiest if you don't detach the PCBs from each other yet. Leave the whole thing together and we'll start by populating the resistors. I like soldering them from above and then turning around to clip the leads and touch up my work. Next come the diodes. Make sure you match the black or white line on the diode with the white line on the diode symbol. Now the ferrite beads. Now we'll place the IC sockets. I usually like to use something like the panel or a piece of cardboard to turn the board around to solder, making sure none fall off. Then I'll solder just the opposing corner pins on each socket to keep them in place, and then finally solder up all the rest. Now we'll open bag B. Let's install the capacitors, starting with the non-polarized ceramic capacitors. Now install the electrolytic capacitors. Note that these are polarized. Make sure you install them correctly. Next come the regulators and transistors. Check the silk screen to make sure you're placing the right one in the right spot. Now install and solder on the power connector. Now place the female pin headers. At this point you can split the boards apart. Use pliers if you need to remove the locating tabs. Make sure the board edges are flat. Now place all the male pin headers and the JST connector. Now place all the female pin headers on the control PCB at the silk screen side. Make sure they're very straight before you solder them on. I use the owl board itself to make sure everything lines up before soldering. Now is a good time to perform a smoke test. Check the manual for that. You can check the voltage on a bunch of spots to make sure that everything is alright before continuing with the build. Now we can place the ICs in their sockets. Again, make sure the polarity is correct according to the silk screen. Now let's open the mechanical components bag. Secure the 12mm spacer into the control PCB. Use the included nut to secure it. Now place the USB connectors but don't solder them yet. And then place the 7 segment display with the dot facing down. Now place the encoder where the silk screen indicates. Leave a hex nut placed on the encoder. This will give it the right height and avoid damaging your module. Now go ahead and install the potentiometers. US3 and US4 need one of the location lugs to be cut. So go ahead and cut one left lug and one right lug from each of two pots and place them in these positions. Now onto the buttons, minding their orientation. The flat side of the button must align with the flat side of the PCB. Now place all of the mini jacks on the PCB Place the LED minding its polarity. The flat side in the silk screen is the negative path. The short leg from the LED is the negative. Now place the plastic window into the OLED hole from the back side of the panel. Remove the protection plastic from both sides. Now you can use some hot glue or tape to stick it on, but I found that on this panel it fits fairly snugly, and once the display is soldered on, it does a good enough job of holding the window in place. Now attach the front panel, adjusting the parts one by one if necessary until they fit. Tighten the nuts using the red nuts for all of the outputs, the smaller black nuts for the rest of the mini jacks, and the larger black nuts are for the pots. Make sure everything is flush to the panel. Now we can solder everything up. If you're having trouble fitting the main PCB with the control PCB, cut short the pot lugs of US9. Now connect both PCBs together Use the included M3 screw to secure them. 
And finally, snap on the OWL board. That's it, check the power header for shorts and plug in to test and calibrate. Let's have a look at the calibration procedure for the patches that require one volt per octave response. Calibration is pretty easy. There are no trim pots to adjust. Everything is done digitally via the, your computer connection. So connect the Lich via USB to your computer, okay? And then connect the left output of the Lich to a multiple and from there to a multimeter and then back to input left over here. What I'm using is the Mordex data. It saves me having to use a multiple because I can just use the voltage monitor setting of data right here, voltage monitor. And I can see what's happening to my input number one voltage wise. And then the data itself has an output back into input left over here on the Lich. Now you click on the link that I've included in this video description and you get this openware laboratory page over here here are the steps there are 10 steps so first connect the owl device we've done that let's click load test patch that's this button right here and i can see that my lich has responded now it says zero point now it says connect left output to the left input and simultaneously to a voltmeter so that's what i described first using a multiple you can do that and in my case i'm using data press and hold button one so let's press and hold button one and copy the value from the multimeter to the button one voltage box so i'm getting 5.03 volts when i press this so i'm gonna write 5.03 in the button 1 voltage. Now we'll do the same to button 2. So I press button 2 and on my data it says minus 5.03 volts. So I'll write that on box number 2. Minus 5.03 volts. Now step 6, click calibrate output. So click calibrate output. Press and hold button 1 and copy the high reading to the button one sample times 1000 box. <laughs> okay, so let's press button one here and we're getting a high reading over here on the software of minus 42387. Copy that button one sample times 1000. Minus 423.87, okay. And now do the same for button two and that gives you a new reading over here that's a low reading we copy that to the button two sample. So that's 423.06, I could have copied pasted that. So now click calibrate input, cool, and store. And our module is calibrated, that easy. While I have your attention and my computer screen up, I'd like to show you how you can load other presets besides the factory ones. So over here on the Lich user manual, you get to a point where it shows you your patches. Patch description, silky reverb as the first one. And right here is a link. So if something happens and you don't have those patches loaded, you can load them yourself. You just click on the link here. Again, make sure that the Lich is connected via USB to your computer and you have to use a MIDI enabled browser such as Chrome or Chromium. And then I can hit connect to device over here. Okay, and then if I press store, it'll ask me which slot. And uh, right now the Lich only has a single digit display, so uh, I would recommend you stay within one to nine, but that's gonna change. I'm pretty sure Bufaco is looking into using an extended seven segment alphabet, but this one's supposed to go on slot number one. So I'll click on number one here, press it, and then it says storing, and there it is. Loaded patch, silky verb, right now over here you can click on device here and you can see when you load on the owl itself a patch it shows you what you have on your memory i've already loaded quite a few I have the harmonic lich ping pong lich midi modular those are the ones that uh, you get from the factory i have quite a few more from here you can reset the device you can erase the storage you can refresh it now if I come here to popular or latest, you see a whole bunch of other OWL patches. Not all of them are necessarily perfectly matched to the Lich hardware. Cleaning Harp here, which is a Carpus Strong string synth. So if I wanted to load that into my Lich, I could 
store it and tell it to store on number nine, for example. And uh, there it is. It's we've got a Euclidean harp, and it shows here a description and instructions. So the five main parameters are pitch, steps, fills, divisions, and decay. So that's how you load more new patches into your Lich. You can also create your own. There's a My Patches section over here. You have to log in to do that and then get into figuring out how it's actually done. So you can use vanilla pure data. I think there's max gen and some other options for coding your own patch into the Lich. All right, so now let's have a listen and play around a bit with the, the included patches, the four included patches. Okay, so I've loaded up patch number one and I've connected my microphone into the Bifaco instrument interface right here, which is sending it phantom power and then sending the sound from my microphone to my ST mix here, which is in turn connected to the left and right audio inputs of the Lich. And the Lich is then connected to my output V2, which is then connected to my interface. And this is patch number one that comes from the factory, the one called Silky Reverb. Now, if we look at the manual, D here is dry wet, so as I start to make it more wet, you start to hear that. The first big knob here is the room size. So that's how quickly the reflections will be heard and how long they will last. This one is time. So this is basically the decay time. So I can make it much shorter. shorter. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Now this is now a this tap is tempo for the pre-delay. Pre so, so let's, let's make, make it very, very fast. fast. That's faster, faster, right? Bigger room size, a little longer time here. And we can turn the dry wet a little bit less. There's a brightness adjustment over here too, which is the filter cutoff of each delay line within the reverb. So I can make it a darker, darker reverb or a brighter ah, reverb. I'm using my voice because I think the human voice is a really good way to test the sound of a reverb. You don't get distracted by the sounds of the synthesizer. Wow. Silky reverb. Oh, I will reverb. And of course, you can CV control all four of these parameters. And you can tap tempo. You can send the tempo to the gate input over here so that your pre delay is timed to whatever your sequence is, to whatever your beat is. So that's cool too. Why don't we do something really quick like that? We'll make a quick patch. And let's just make these envelopes a little shorter. Let's slow up the key step a little bit and send that clock take it from the rising output here of the rampage and we'll stick that into gate input one right here we can see the LED blinking over here so our pre-delay time is matching and I'll take some cycling envelope outputs to modulate some of our CV parameters here Very nice, very nice, oh, too much reverb, very nice though, I like it. Let's just jump right to patch three, 
So I turn to three and I press here, and that's a delay. So uh, I can I tap. I can tap the delay if I want to. So let's remove our our clock. Hey, 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 cool. cool. This, this is the tap, tap tempo, tempo division, division, division. Right? Right. right? This, this number, is number here is the feedback, 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 feedback. and this is, 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 is the stereo, stereo, stereo setting, 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 setting. In the middle position, they're the same, and then as you move to the right, you multiply, multiply, multiply. Now to the right, you divide, you divide, and to the left, you multiply, and you start getting, start getting. Different, 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 different rhythms, 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 r
This one moves in half tones. Now this one, let's stop the sequence for a minute. This is your fine tune, right? Knob number two, or B rather. Here, C and D are interesting. C is the harmonic center. I don't really know what that means, but this is the effect it has. So this is definitely more fundamental. As you move it, it seems like you lose the fundamental and start hearing more of the upper harmonics, right? And this one, letter D, is called harmonic tilt. And it says, adjusts the energy of the low and high frequencies from the harmonic center. So this is what happens when I turn it all the way to the left. I get nothing but the fundamental. As I approach the middle, I get more of the others. And then as I pass it fully clockwise, it's back to just the fundamental. Now the buttons. The left button mutes the odd harmonics. And the right button mutes the even harmonics. And they're performative because they're not set as toggle buttons, so you can, you can play them like that. A little faster. So this is with the odd harmonics muted. This is with the even harmonics muted. Of course, if I press both, you get nothing, right? And I can change my timbre using these little faders here, which is really nice. The buttons on the VCMC also transpose by half steps. So it's receiving note information via MIDI as well. So yeah, they're a great pairing for this particular mode. And of course you can use it, you can set up the VCMC to control other MIDI parameters from other OWL patches or Lich patches that you may have loaded up in there. So here again, here's our fundamental. As you create your timbre, by determining the volume of each of these. Now I can also voltage control the tilt and center, harmonic tilt and harmonic center, right? As I have voltage control inputs for those and attenuators right here. Some gates to the gate inputs here. Interesting. When they activate together, you get silence. I'm using the rampage here to generate these gates. So, very cool. Super cool. I mean, if this module only did this, that would already be pretty awesome but we have one more patch to check out it's number four and that's the MIDI modular so basically Lich becomes then a MIDI to CV and a CV to MIDI so basically a bridge between your computer world and or hardware synth world with your modular CV world now to demo this patch is going to be uh, quite a bit more complex. I think we're going to need to set something up with Bitwig and uh, a patch with the modular, a patch with Bitwig and a way for them to interact. I think that deserves its own video at some point. So I'm not going to do it right now. This video has been long enough as it is. Remember, you can create your own patches as well as load existing patches from the OWL library. You can modify patches that are existing. Maybe they're existing for a different OWL hardware and you can make them work better for this particular hardware module. So that's it for now. I hope you liked the video. If you did, remember to hit like, subscribe to my channel, maybe pitch in on my Patreon, comment below, you know, all that stuff. See you soon. Stay noisy.